So I'm very pleased to welcome Adriana Paula Palacios Luna of Luna Cultura, Art, Science and Culture for Thriving Communities. Adriana has been teaching with the Boulder Public Library for several years and is also a community connector with the city of Boulder. Adriana, welcome. Thank we you. Are, <laughs> we are looking forward to Nieder Felting to connect our story with Mother Earth. This program will be conducted in Spanish and English, and now Adriana will share this welcome in Spanish for our bilingual and Spanish-speaking participants. Thank you, Katy. Gracias. Buenas tardes y bienvenidos y bienvenidas a todos. Estamos iniciando esta sesión de Pilana Picada y para conectar nuestras historias con la Madre de Tierra. En esta sesión, Melanie estará en el fondo apoyándonos en el chat para poder tener, responder a todas las preguntas. Y bueno, la biblioteca tiene ciertas reglas este, en estos eventos en línea que responde a seguir los, los mismos comportamientos de respeto, equidad e inclusión en, todas las, en todos los espacios, tanto virtuales como físicos de la biblioteca. Este, este programa va a ser grabado y ustedes pueden acceder a él una vez que haya terminado la sesión en el canal de YouTube de la Biblioteca Pública de Boulder y pueden también este, participar, es parte del verano de descubrimiento. Les invitamos a que puedan, si no se han registrado aún, puedan registrarse en boulderlibrary.org y pueden registrarse y dar el seguimiento a sus tiempos de lectura y a las actividades que realizan para ganar premios muy divertidos y este y unirse al objetivo de mil thousand million o oh, un millón de minutos de lectura y bueno entonces bueno está vamos a iniciar con la lana picada soy su servidora Adriana Paula Palacios Luna de Luna Cultura gracias Gracias, Adriana. Okay, so welcome everybody. And we're gonna start doing our class. It's gonna be bilingual, so vamos a iniciar la clase. Y you can see in your uh, supplies kit that you have like a, a block of bone where you're gonna do the needle felting. I have here some examples of what we're gonna do. And we do have uh some several different colors that uh, of wool that you will be using tenemos la lana un bloque de de hule espuma y aquí hay algunos ejemplos tenemos la lana y you do have um these pieces of felt this is gonna turn like a bracelet like the one that you see here that you will be able to wear like this and that's why we having like this uh, thin and longer line piece of felt. And then you must have one of these squares as well, um, where we're gonna do this kind of landscapes, right? And you do have your needles and some extra because the needles, let, let's um, see that they're actually very sharp. If you can see, let me get them closer you it's like pretty sharp so let's be very very careful i will explain how are we going to use this one and bueno tenemos entonces estas piezas un, un pedazo de fieltro encuadrado donde vamos a hacer un paisaje y una donde vamos a hacer un brazalete no que es similar al que estoy usando en estos momentos y bueno por eso tenemos esta pieza más larga tenemos la lana Tenemos la aguja que hay que tener mucha precaución porque tiene una punta muy, muy filosa. Entonces, bueno, hay que tener cuidado. Y ahorita vamos a explicar cómo la vamos a usar. So, if you, I will start like asking you, like if you would like to introduce yourself and tell us like a good a memory that you have from your childhood that is that connects you with nature like what ways you did connect with nature when in your childhood and what are your memories from that so feel free to share um open you can open your microphone or you can post it in the chat whenever you decide i can start myself well, as i say before my name is adriana i am from puebla city in mexico and it's a city kind of like a medium big city 
but it is surrounded uh, with a lot of forest and highlands and it's very close also to the beach. So my memories connect a lot with the forest, with the mountains. We do have the volcano Popocatépetl and the uh, volcano that is not active right now. Well, Popocatépetl is very active, but uh, the next volcano is um, Iztaccíhuatl, which means uh, a sleeping woman. And it's a very interesting legend that we do have around it. And that's um, something that I do connect a lot because my father, he likes to do hiking and climbing and which he always took us there uh, when we were little. So that's a way that I connect also. And also because we are very close to the beach, um, everything that is water and sea and movement, that's something that it really connects with me as well. So I will pass it to uh, Kathy Lane. <laughs> sure. Gracias, Adriana. Um, I have a memory of a small creek going through our neighborhood. And so different children and I from the neighborhood would go wading and we knew all about crawdads and leeches and minnows. Um, and there was also a, what thought we thought was a giant forest with probably like a four acre forest that was undeveloped. And we only had to come home when mom rang the dinner bell. So it was a very free young childhood that I remember just the freedom and wonder of being in nature. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy. Yeah. Would you like to call somebody else? Sure. Um, so I don't know if Shino or the person on the iPhone would like to share either in chat um, by audio or video, you're welcome to do so. I would love to share. Miss Melanie. <laughs> I'm gonna actually post it in the chat. So anybody else that wants to post in the chat. So I grew up near the mountains in Utah um, and, and didn't really think anything of it. But um, my aunt lived in San Diego and we would go spend summers with her and I was so connected to the ocean. I've never felt a deep, like it was blew me away the ocean when I was very little. But then I noticed coming back, the mountains were my home. Like that was my hug because the mountains would just surround me. And um, I don't know if anyone else has that feeling, being, being that we live near the mountains, when we come home, there's always that there for us. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if you know for this one, oh, the person that is in the iPhone, would you like to share your experience? So we've got, thanks for coordinating this program. Love this question and also feel very connected to a creek and mountains. Thank you, Tori, for sharing. Thank you. Great. And you know, if you're comfortable sharing either in chat or unmute yourself, you're welcome to do so. Okay. Okay, you can write it in the chat later. I don't know if you're having audio connection <laughs> troubles or something. Okay, so we're gonna start doing, um, what we're gonna do today you know, in this piece of, of felt is gonna do a landscape where we, oh, it's actually not exactly a landscape. It's gonna do a story, a piece where you try to tell your story and how do you connect your story with, with, uh, with the nature, with mother earth. So today I just share with you that I will connect with uh, like the mountains and things like that, the volcan Popocatépetl, the Popocatépetl volcano. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna work a little bit on making that volcano. And what we use, gonna use is like any piece of wood that you would like to, to use any color. Like if you see this one, this is kind of like an abstract landscape that has the moon but it has also like the grass and a little bit of the mountains and a symbolic river or creek or little river and some in this one you also can see like the sky and it's a woman and things like that so you can do anything that you would like those are only some examples and what we can do is with this um, needle we can going to pull out the, the needle. I will get closer so you can see better. 
And what we're gonna do is like turn the needle upside down or to the other side. And this little, um, little piece will get in the thinner side so we can stick it back in. And then you have the handle for your, for your needle with, you will be poking with, okay? So I'm gonna start doing here, like part of the grass and kind of earth, dirt, um, dirt, yeah, the ground <laughs> with brown. So you kind of make it fluffy like this. Lo que estoy tratando de hacer ahora, pusimos la aguja, ¿no? Era sacar, sacando este, este trozo de madera, volteando la aguja y asegurándonos que la parte doblada va a estar the folded side, la parte doblada va a estar en, en la parte más delgada para volverla a introducir. Y entonces tenemos el handle, la manija, el mango. Y... So you will open it like this, the wool, and make start making the shape that you would like to, to, to build in here. So you just put some wool in there and start poking. And you will see how it's getting inside the felt. Be very careful with your fingers. You don't want to have the needle poking your finger. It's very, very painful. And then you will be see like how uh, this texture it will be taking. It will, you will be shaping actually the texture. You can do like uh, very very flat, or you can do like a little bit fluffy and things like that. You will be uh, managing your your wool in depending on how much do you pack on it and. And sometimes you have to fill it off to make sure that it won't get a stick in your piece of foam, okay? So everyone's in it, yeah, everyone. So you know, Adrian, you're saying every once in a while just lift it off to reposition it on the yes, foam? Yes, on the foam to make sure that it won't get like <laughs> stick on the foam, <laughs> yeah. Because I know when I did it once, I didn't know you were supposed to lift it off the foam. And when I lifted it off, I pulled it very quickly and it took a big chunk of foam with it because the fibers had gone into the foam underneath. Yeah. So if you are, if you've done it for a while, just kind of lift it off slowly. Um, and then you can always pull, pull out the foam afterward. Yes, and if you see in the back, you, you will see kind of the same pattern, but more, yeah, you, okay. And then you just start, yeah, like poking. And something interesting, like you can mix colors. Like if I want to do like some greens, like mix it with the brown, I can take a little piece of each and mix them together <laughs> to make it more like a texture of colors. Right. So Miss Melanie is asking, what happens if you poke your finger? Oh, it will be painful. <laughs> yeah, try not to do it. Uh, it may bleed a little bit. I mean, it's like it's like any needle. If you have poked your finger with a needle, you will feel like a sleepy beauty or what is the name? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but no, please don't do it. Don't, yeah. don't hurt. So you will. Keep doing it and whatever you would like to do, like a like a mountain, an ocean, a person, like the one that I show in here, right? It's the woman carry on things. And also if you would like to add like some a tree, like I was doing this kind of little bee in this morning in another class that we did have, I can show you, I will move this a little bit here. Like I'll sh show you how do we do like a three-dimensional piece. So you also get some of your wool. First, you can make it fluffy. And then yeah, we'll use just part of it. You can make it a little bit fluffy, kind of shredded. 
he's not shredded. How do you say this? Yeah, uh, yeah, I would say because you're pulling apart the fibers to make them go, yeah, like different crossways because then that's actually going to make the felting piece stronger. stronger. Yeah. So if they're all laying in one direction, then they're not as strong as if they're, um, they're yes, yeah, sh shredding they're or mixed and woven. <laughs> yeah, I, I think fluffing. We'll go with fluffing. Yeah. I like fluffing. And then you will be like kind of folding the shape that you would like to do, and then you will start also plucking to make sure like this will get connected in the shape that you would like to do. And as much as you uh, puck, 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 uh, the tie, it will get tighter. Tight, yeah. So. Como se dice fluffing in Spanish? En español. It can be like esponjoso. Entonces vamos a hacer la lana esponjadita, esponjada. And then, and also be careful because if you just poke in one side, it will be like a caterpillar stuck in your palm. <laughs> so you make sure that you move it around and keep poking to make sure that you will be able to do like the whole, whole, whole shape. When you start feeling that is um, more compact and very tight, you will know that it's ready. And it is funny, but the more that you pucked, also it gets like more, um, how you say? Like smooth? smooth. Like it's smooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, even if it's very tight, that it can, you can feel it very hard, but it's very smooth in the outside. Sometimes you may need, like, if you want to do, like, a, yeah, a very hairy dog, you may need to make it, like, maybe like the internal shape like more tight, but then a, uh, a um, yes. Uh, like a layer. Like a layer, like more fluffy. And then you poke, poke a little bit less. And well, there's like many other tools that will help you even to make it like hairy and yeah. Or the fur looking more kind of realistic. So you just fuck, 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 trying to make the shape that you would like to create. And Adriana, when did you start felting? When did I start felting? Not too long ago, I think in 2017. And how did you learn felting? I learned felting at the Building 61. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you aren't familiar with Building 61, it is the maker space at the main library here at the public library. Yes, and it's an amazing space. We always recommend for you to um, to visit. Now it is back open, so it has like a uh, drop-in hours where you can come. They do have a lot of amazing. Uh, machines and supplies where you can do many, many creative projects. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you see, still, still very soft, but if I keep poking, it will be tighter. Okay. That to make the bee. Great. I'm just kind of making just like a sample here. I maybe not take that um, because sometimes like we do have like 90 minutes here. And if you see, I, I can do like 90 minutes for just one little B or I can work uh, with the landscape and you just, you can decide. I'm just saying like some samples here. So you get like the general information to the different projects uh, with the need, yeah, on the needle felt in. And something that I find like very good, very interesting is like how can this has like so many, it's like a very versatile, versatile? Versatile, yeah. yep. Yeah, uh, material because you can do something flat, but something three dimensional. You can do a bag or a little purse or a wallet, but you can also do it like a, on your shirt. And yeah, like, Kathy was saying this morning that she fixed sometimes sweaters 
Yeah, so I had a whole, this was actually part of Art of Repair, which was an exhibit we did several years ago. And we invited people to donate clothing. And so we learned different methods of repairing things. And so there was a woolly repair and that we did primarily with needle felting like this. And what I learned is the bigger your pieces that you're putting onto the sweater, the more you're poking, the sweater started to shrink around where the needle was going. So it wasn't quite the repair I was expecting. <laughs> and so when Adriana was making the bee, you could make what you want to put on your sweater ahead of time and then just leave enough, um, or you can add a little bit more. So you put it onto the sweater and then you just kind of gently poke it around um, with the needle so that it attaches to the sweater, but it's not so much you're felting the sweater strongly so that it shrinks. And I was doing it on a, it was like a wool and silk um sweater and so that it just both the silk and the wool shrunk around as i was needle felting and you could also like make a piece like adriana was doing and then sew it onto something as well um, and it won't it's worth noting that this needle felting process that we're doing i wonder if people have tried it on other things besides wool um, i know it works with silk i'm wondering if yeah. others have tried it on some a different kind of material Adriana, have you tried something? Like I well, I well, I have been with uh, like different kind of yarn, but it's still kind of wool, <laughs> wool yeah. or cotton. But but yeah, but it gives you like more texture for some things when you can yeah yeah with some yarn. Um, and actually, yes, you can explore with different materials to do like the needle felting. And do you know why the wool? felt together like that like what how do it get mm -hmm. not really i think we, it's because because you like the texture that you have <laughs> like because i know like my hair is kind of if i braid it and if i don't tie it my braids woo, will yep. disappear right away but because that's the texture of the of the wool in the sheep or the alpaca or other animals that provide this yep. kind of material is more like already fluffy and yeah. Okay. I, and I actually know, sorry, and that was not meant to be a trick question. Um, so on wool, it's a protein fiber and it has scales on the shaft. So if you, um, we'll see, Miss Melanie, will you look and see if you can find an electron microscope image of wool? Um, it will show that, we'll see if we can send a picture of it. it the like our hair doesn't have, we don't have this, the, um, I think it's called scales. We don't have scales on our hair. That's why like Adriana was saying, your braid will come out easily um, if you don't tie it. Um, but wool, wool has um, scales on it. And so the process of what Adrian is doing with the needle, um, because there's little barbs on the needle, if you very carefully run your finger backwards on the needle, don't poke yourself you can feel the um, jagged edges of the needle and so that that friction is what makes the scales kind of tighten together and so we're calling that felting um and so it will work on silk it it works better like i think adriana has um I, i'm guessing i think it's probably corydale um, or at least corydale is the kind of sheep that makes is really popular for making felting kits mm -hmm. um merino is is like when you go to the store and you see um like a sweater or socks made out of merino that's often considered a higher quality than corydale because it's softer and so merino doesn't actually felt as easily and as well as corydale because i think that i and i'm just guessing here i think the scales on merino are closer together so they're finer than the corydale which which felt more quickly um so if you're a beginning spinner it's also yeah. easier to start with Coriodale than it is with Merino because Merino is much slipperier, which is what why we think of it as being softer. Thank you for the information. Yes. <laughs> and also we were um, like, in, well, these supplies that you do have in your kit will last uh, for like many little projects maybe, but in case if you would like to buy some more supplies, we did find some places Right, Kathleen? Kath, sure. Yep. I will I'll put the links in the chat. And and also you will find in your kit that you do have 
like uh, some eyes and some Velcro, like the Velcro will be like for the bracelet. If you decide to make the, the bracelet, uh, you will need like the Velcro in order to go open and close it. Like it will be like, how do you say broche, which is the thing that will make it? Yeah, just a Velcro. The Velcro, it, yeah, I mean, I think it's hook and loop is yeah. the non-branded name. And then you will have to, your for your bracelet, you do have some uh, eyes, some like self sticky googly eyes in case that you would like to do like a little puppy or an animal or anything that, uh, yeah, any anything that you would like to put some eyes. So you do have them there. And you do have some um, no, plastic eyes um, that you also have like a, uh, glue, hot glue bar, where you is a hot glue stick, and you you can use once that you finish. Like if you gonna put the little eye, just a little tiny little piece, a tiny piece of uh, glue, hot glue, hot glue on it to make sure that it will stick in there. So that's some part of the material that you do have in your in your kit. So as you see, I'm kind of starting, well, I deal a little bit of the mountain. It's not finished yet because I can do like more texture and things like that. And I'm starting to do like some of the background, like the, the uh, sky, but kind of play a little bit on those. You can, as I said before, you can make it like really flat and smooth, or you can be fluffy, or you can, depending on, how much energy do you have in your hands? <laughs> right, kind of. And can you pick it up and put it down? Is there a time where you have to finish? Like for the wool, does it matter if it takes you a long time to finish? Well, like if when it takes you longer time, like if you, like like this, like if you're doing like a, something three dimensional and things like that, it will it may take you longer time because if you want to make sure that is um like really compact the wool and very yeah con like um yeah like compact and tight to make sure that it will stay and won't be like deformed like in a month mm -hmm. <laughs> so you will need to spend some more time to make sure like you have like all the little details because you can do anything i mean i have seen the beautiful project what you do like a whole village or like a like a huge landscapes and you can do as detailed as you want it so you can you can you you can see like there's people that make actually uh, pictures of their family members and they wow. look like so much alike <laughs> that you see like oh it's almost real wow uh, but so that takes like a lot of time and practice. And I don't, can you see my screen, Adriana? Um, if you look up the, so in the chat, Melanie put a link to science image. And so she's got a electron microscope image of merino wool. And so if you click on that link, you can see the, um, the, the scales. scales. And so that's, that's what you're activating with the needle, with the friction of the needle. You're making it like a little hooks speaking yep. to each other. Yep. Um, so Melanie's asking, what what are you working on right now? What yellow thing are you working on? Oh yes, the yellow thing that I'm working is I'm trying to make a little V too. In order, like if we want to save Mother Earth, we need more pollinators. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm making a little V here. I actually, I love making bees. I have kind of like a collection now. <laughs> <laughs> How do you make the wings? Oh, the wings are uh, very, not too hard to make. Actually, right. Let me see, I don't have, maybe I'm gonna do some pink wings. This is a very light pink. So you take also a little piece of it as, well, we always make it fluffy first to make sure that it's kind of crossover here. 
and then you it, it will be the same kind of make the shape that you would like to to shape out of the wood and start poking with the wings uh, it will take you a little bit longer to make it like really flat and smooth so i encourage you to make it with a little bit of patience because you think like oh you is hard to, to see maybe i can make like a like a blue wing so you, you will be able to see it because that thing was too light so So you make it fluffy, then you kind of do a little wing shape. It doesn't have to be perfect because you will actually make it while you're fucking. You can always reshape the original shape. And if you see, you kind of making the wing that visible. Like a little bit, like a kind of like a almond shape i'm trying to make here but then when you pull it off from your from your phone it's kind of like very hairy in the other side so you have to keep going like to to keep turning it over to make yeah it flat. turn it over and over like many times until it's uh, as flat as you want it flat and smooth as you want it because every time that you fuck kind of it gets hairy to the other side <laughs> so you have to turn it again and do it again and do it over and over and over and friends those of us you who are watching you're welcome to ask questions in the chat or unmute yourself to ask and you can ask in english or spanish i'm going to repeat that in spanish i think lupita was joining i think we might have lost this so that someone will be joined but no. yeah yeah hopefully we'll come back so uh, well imagine that i did like many many times and imagine that it's kind of ready this one is still very very fluffy <laughs> but imagine that it's there and then you just will be poking it in so like if you're doing a bunny or a dog or a little cat or anything uh, like ears and even mouth or anything like the arms and things like that you can do it like a separate shape and then attach it to the piece that you would like to so well this is a kind of weird bee with a blue wing <laughs> <laughs> it was because if not you won't you wouldn't be able you to see, see it, it yeah <laughs> but if you see also like if you say like oh no i put it in the wrong side it's very easy to just pull it out and then just go back okay okay and like like in this one you can see there's like some um little dots that i have around here so if you want to do like maybe like flowers or a star or something like that you can um you can use any a, a little piece a very tiny little piece of of your wool i don't know if you can actually see it like it's very very little it is visible yeah and then kind of like like get it let straight you can round it uh, twist it a little bit just a little bit and then you will put it around your needle like a french knot you know when, when with embroidery and then you just put it in the place that you would like to do and then start poking in the sorry i was trying to find the um the b chica playlist and accidentally started playing our music <laughs> okay so maybe like in this well you know, oh that was quick pizza. so now you can see here hola lupita bienvenida Yeah. Hola, hola, buenas tardes. Buenas Good afternoon. Tarde. Estamos haciendo la lana picada, entonces tienes una aguja como estas en tu estuche. Okay. 
Entonces voy a explicar si quieres cómo ponerlo. I'm going to do a pause so only so she can catch up. And it's a good review, especially for the needles. I've never seen a case like that that turns into a needle. Yeah, Holder, it's because great. it is the case and the, the handle. Yeah. Okay. So, Lupita, entonces se va a sacar la aguja así. Sale una aguja aquí. Y lo que vamos a hacer es voltearla para que la parte que está doblada quede sujetada en la parte más delgada del, del palito. Y entonces podamos ponerla de nuevo adentro del, del mango y ya quedaría así. ¿Sí? Si tienes alguna pregunta, no te sé. Y trae un pequeño cuadrito donde puedes hacer un paisaje. ¿Quieres compartirnos algún recuerdo de tu infancia, de cómo conectas con la madre tierra y con la naturaleza? Bueno, sí, este, ¿en español está bien? Sí, sí, sí. Sí, ok. Este, pues yo como recuerdo, pues bueno, mi padre fue agricultor y, y también ganadero. Entonces, este, la tierra, pues la quiero mucho porque pues me alimentaba, ¿verdad? Y los animalitos pues los puedo apreciar mucho porque también me alimentaban. Entonces, para mí me trae muchísimos recuerdos, muchos recuerdos, este, los paisajes, todo, porque era hermoso. Muy bien, muchas gracias. Mi infancia fue muy bonita. Okay. Lupita is sharing that she of Uh, her father was a farmer and also he got uh, some cows and some other animals. So he, she was always connected with the land and with Mother Earth. And she says that she values very much because this is what it has been feeding her since she was little. And the way that it fits us all, actually. And yes, and, uh, and also connected with the little animals that she used to have because of the same reason. Gracias, Lupita. Entonces, estamos haciendo algún paisaje o algún símbolo. Este puede ser un paisaje. También estábamos haciendo como un tipo de abejita o algo así. Y tenemos una, una pieza que es un poco más larga para hacer un brazalete. Y entonces, este se lo puede hacer. Uh -huh. Entonces, este va a quedar como brazalete donde puedes ponerle distintos símbolos y colores, los que tú quieras este, en, de, para decorar con la lana. Y en el paquete viene un velcro para, poderlas, este, para poder unirla y que sea el broche. Entonces puedes utilizar ya sea la pieza de fieltro. You can start with the piece of, uh, of felt, the square to make a landscape. O puedes utilizar el brazalete, o you can start with your bracelet, o you can start with a three-dimensional. Puedes iniciar con una figura tridimensional, como gustes. Cualquier pregunta, no dudes en preguntar. La haces. Claro que sí. Gracias, gracias, Adriana. Ok. So, I was explaining like how to do this little dot here, if you see. So it was like a French knot kind of thing. How did you make the stripes on the bee? Oh, that's a, another good question. Let me see. Maybe it's not uh, as tight as needed yet. Let me just put a little bit okay. more. <laughs> just a second, please. But it is like very easy uh, for the stripes. It's very easy and you just need to Get a little piece of your. I think it is. And the the reason why you wanted it to be tighter is so the when you add the stripe on top, it'll show up more. Is that it, right? It will show up more, but also yes, because if it's like very soft, you will need a lot, and it will you like maybe like if you're making an ant, it will be good that is not that tight because then you can do like a little shape, you know, like, 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 yeah, like the, the ant body that has like three different, how do you say like, like three different? Yeah, <laughs> three body, like the abdomen, yes, like thorax, a, yeah. Yeah, 
but um, because the B, you don't want to have it like, maybe if it was a, a yellow, no, <laughs> a yellow, what's the yellow jacket? Yellow jacket. Oh, yeah, yeah, yellow jacket. Yes, that's why, like maybe you don't need that tie because then you can do that shape, right? But with the B, I think this is fine. But if it was like, you just take a little piece of like the black will be the black wool for the stripes. And then you just kind of um, put it around like this. And then you will start poking on it to make sure that it will stay in there. Mm -hmm. But I will show you now. Otra vez en español también. Sí. Para poner las líneas de la abejita. Pues lo ideal es que esté un poco ya más compacta porque es como está muy suavecita, corro el riesgo de si fuera a ser como una hormiga o tal vez una avispa que se necesita que tenga la cinturita de avispa, la famosa cinturita de avispa se puede maniobrar un poco más. Esta todavía no está tan compactada, pero para hacer las líneas lo que tomamos es un pedacito de la lana, lo ponemos estiradito you straight it, then you put it around, lo ponemos alrededor del cuerpo, en la parte donde queremos que esté, y lo vamos a, a picar con la, con la aguja. And then we start poking with the needle. So if you see, this is getting the shape. But because this is still kind of soft, if I keep poking, it will be like kind of bumpy, right? <laughs> so, but it's okay. Here is a sample, so you can know how to do this right. And then, like, if you want to do the eyes, también si quieres hacer los ojitos, it will be very similar as the flower that we, we did before. Like, you take a little piece of this, tomas un pedacito de la lana, you put it around your needle, Lo enredas en tu aguja. And then you will put it like whatever you want it, right? Y luego ya lo empezamos a poner en la abejita. Oops. Oh, so Melanie says, I thought the stripes on the bee were drawn on. Is everything you're showing us made with felt or for, with wool? Yes, everything that you see in here, like the samples and everything we do is only only the the wood. Yes. There are some things in the kit, Melanie, that are so there's googly eyes and there's velcro. So other things that you can add on to add textures or features or to make it into a bracelet. Um, but all the all the images that you're seeing are made from wool. Yes. And if anyone, any of you have questions, you're welcome to unmute yourself or type it into the chat in English or Espanol. Si tienen preguntas, siéntense con la libertad de abrir su micrófono para hacer sus preguntas o ponerlas en el chat, ya sea en inglés o en español. Yeah, thank you. And if you see, well, I need another eye. I will take to make the other eye, also another little piece, like is the black also black and I will put it around. Nuevamente otro pedacito de lana negra. La voy a poner alrededor de la aguja. And then you wrap it around. And things that you can make, um, you could make these into a mobile for a child. Yes. Or for your, for your own pleasure in front of the window. Um, you can also make if you have cats, they love wool. So if you're going to make a cat toy, you can make it all sorts of colors, but you really need to make it strong. So like, don't leave it fluffy because then they'll just chew it with their teeth. Um, and once you've made your, especially if you're just doing like a round ball, mm -hmm. um, you can put it inside like a pantyhose or something like that, that will keep it tight and throw it into your washing machine with your towels on hot with, with um, soap. And that soap and friction will make it even tighter um, yeah. than you can do with the, need the felted needle. However, it will make your colors kind of merge together more. So if you if you want it to be the way it is when you're finished, um, if you want to wet felt it, then just do it by hand so you can watch what's happening. And with white, uh, uh, with uh, cold water. 
with cold water yeah. okay yeah so if you want it to felt more hot water it's the three things that make wet felting happen we're doing needle felting but wet felting is water hot water agitation and soap yeah can i see now we just oh. have little eyes. Eyes. <laughs> love the bee thank you <laughs> yeah and then um well i need another stripe here to make and if you don't know the library has two honeybee hives on the roof of the garden at the main library and melanie had asked if we're doing anything with the bee chicas um, we'll have a workshop in august the month of september is pollinator appreciation month and so miss melanie will be doing pollinator story time and oh alice God. will be doing i think and ruth so we'll have um, activities throughout the month and I will put in the details about the Bee Boulder Festival, and that's open for all ages. Okay. Okay. So we do have, if any of you uh, would like to open your camera and show us what you're doing, that would be great. If you want to share your creation that will be very good. Okay. Uh, Kathy, how do you call the aguijón? The aguijón is the- Oh, the stinger? Yeah, the stinger. So I'm gonna try to do the stinger. Will be similar than the eyes, but instead of just poking it in, I also will make like many layers so it will get oh, out. <laughs> I did not know that. And not every honeybee has a stinger. Does anyone know which bees don't have stingers of the honeybees? Let's see. Yay, pollinator month. I know it's a lot of fun. Melanie doesn't know which bee doesn't have a stinger. Does anybody else know? I will say the sanganos, but I'm not really sure. So which one? How do you say is the sanganos are the male? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So the male bees are called drones, and in Spanish they're called sanguelos. Sanganos. Sanguelos. Sanganos with an N. Oh, sanganos? Yes. And also, it's a way to refer a person that is lazy, you oh. know, <laughs> because the, that's what the zanganos do. They don't. They don't do much. <laughs> I, I didn't correct? realize that. Is um, that correct, Kathy? Or am I? They so they have a very important duty for a short okay. time of their life, which is one of the reasons <laughs> why they don't live very long. Okay. Um, and so they, um, they have they mate with the queen so when the queen is ready to fly that is the most important job of the male bees and i don't know why they don't have stingers um but in normal times we would have a meet the bees program with the bee chicas um and so that would be in june um but because of covid um we've had to do some very different things with the bee chicas and i put the link in the chat to their playlist um, so this year we did a live hive inspection. And so people got to watch the, the inspection and the camera got up very close to the bees, which was exciting because that's not something we can do in person. So we've learned some things during COVID, how to do things differently. Oh, wow, and there's the little stinger. That looks beautiful. So you you did it in a circle and then pulled out, or you just kept adding to make the You tip? keep adding. So you, yeah, you, I just keep adding. A little bit to make it, yeah. you know. Entonces, para hacer el, el aguijón, lo que hice fue como los ojitos, un pedazo de, de la lana así, de, eh, derechita, alrededor de la aguja. Y entonces lo metí ahí, le estuve, bueno, picando y luego le fui añadiendo otro poquito más y otro poquito más para que quede salidito el aguijón. Entonces, se puede ver que está. So you can see that it's coming out. 
but we can make it like sharper if we want. You know. Podemos hacerlo más filoso, como gusta. Okay. Maybe I'm gonna do now. And okay. I think Lupita was showing us. Oh, Lupita, estabas mostrándonos. Tienes tu micrófono. Sí, está apagada. Yo estoy haciendo una flor y probablemente esta florecita vaya a llegar a las manos de mi mamá, que ya tengo mucho que no la veo y probablemente le guste mucho. Entonces la estoy haciendo. Quiero hacerla creativa. A ver ahorita cómo nos sale. Ay, muy bonita. Yeah. Uh -huh. Gracias por compartir. Sí. Uh -huh. say that she is making a beautiful flower and and she said that probably it will end in the hands of her mother because oh. it has been a while that she hasn't been able to see her. So she said that she will appreciate very, very much the flower that she's making for her. Gracias por compartirlo. Sí. Uh -huh. Okay, now I'm going to do the wing for this. Anyone else that would like to share what you're making? Hay alguien más que quiera compartir? And I put the details of the Be Be Boulder Festival. It's Saturday, September 18th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And it's by the Glen Huntington Band Shell, which is where the farmer's market is. Um, and it's open, you can come and enjoy the different activities. Um, we'll also have new stations talking about things that we can do to improve the environment to address climate change. Um, so small things that you can do in your daily life, as well as advocacy and writing to lawmakers. And um, you can also dissect a flower and find out what which um, pollinators are attracted to which um, which types of flowers. So like the butterfly has the proboscis and the bee um, uses their like hairy leg. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. And Jeff and Paige will be there to Pero, make it dance. Lupita? Sí. Oh, I didn't know if you were trying to share. ¿Ibas a comentar algo, Lupita? Oh, no, no. Okay. Estaba viendo todos los, los enlaces que han compartido nada más. Oh, muy bien. Okay. Sí. Estaban, son enlaces de algunos otros programas que tienen que ver con el, las polinizadoras. Las Bichicas es un grupo de, este, que bueno, que trabaja. ¿Es parte de la librería de Bichicas? They, they start, they're a separate group, but they started with the library um, es, doing workshops. Es un grupo que trabaja muy cercano con la biblioteca y ellas, ellas cultivan abejas, entonces tienen sus panales de abeja, de hecho en la biblioteca también hay unas panales de abeja en el techo de, del edificio este, y tienen varios, varios programas también, entonces pusieron en el, en el chat el enlace para esos programas Oh, qué interesante sí. A mí me gusta mucho la miel de abeja They also teach gardening programs at the Denver Botanical Gardens and how to be a beekeeper so they, they teach in different places as well. So you might see them at Growing Gardens and at Fort Collins. También ellas enseñan cómo cultivar una, un huerto en el Jardín Botánico de Denver. Y tienen muchos talleres y clases sobre, sobre los huertos y sobre los polinizadores y cómo cuidar a las abejas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I have this little one that is like two hearts in here. And for this one also, you can like, if you keep like doing layers and things like that, it can get more texture. You can do like a, even if it's something flat, can take like a little 3D, 3 dimension, yeah. Mm. So if you wanted to wear that piece that you made, how what what would you do to attach it? Like to a jacket or? Like this one? Mm -hmm. Well, like for a jacket, if it's like a denim jacket, because the denim sometimes is like a harder, 
you can actually try to needle felt it in 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 any garment that you would like to wear but depending on the on the texture of the garment because like denim is very can be very thick maybe the needle will break but but yeah you can needle felt it or you can just like in this case because it is it is felted on a piece of felt <laughs> you can actually sew it as well yeah it can be like a patch for your jacket <laughs> it seems like i'm just poking on my on my piece of uh, foam but it's actually i have the little wing in here okay <laughs> Maybe you're not like very actually able to see it very well, but it is in here. So I'm gonna attach it. The first one. And sometimes you can add more, uh, a little bit of more wool if you need to attach it, like an extra wool to make it. To make the connection. And if you see, so you see this. Oh, it's getting in. the wing in there. Nice. Okay. 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 I don't know if any have any one uh, have any questions or want to share what you're doing. Okay, no, <laughs> everybody's so silent. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's taken time to, I think when thing, when we first went online, um, that was the best way for people to connect with each other. And now that things have opened up, I feel like doing things on screen, um, we're, not, we're not quite as active maybe. We spend, we kind of still spend so much time on the screen mm -hmm. that maybe people is not that active anymore on the screen. Yeah, I went to a, a conference last week and part of me was really glad it was online because there were like over a thousand different events you could attend. And so you could kind of jump from one to one to the other, but then, you know, it, if you really wanted to pay attention to like, it was better to just sit and listen. Um, but it was recorded, so I could go back and, and listen to other things. Yeah. If I'm going to make the time. And remember when you're doing like little pieces, like the wings or ears or something, uh, to turn it around more often because it can be get uh, needle felted to your foam. And you're doing that. the The wool is directly onto the foam. It's not on your piece of fabric, right now because you're making the wing so you can pull it off. Yes. Yeah. No, she's not on a piece of fabric. You have two foam blocks there, right, Adriana? Because it looks like there's, okay. Oh, and I have, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Because sometimes I get like very excited and I can, I get through. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, I think some most of you may have a, a wider one, maybe. Yeah, but yeah. this is kind of thing. So. And if you are looking to use any kind of foam, it's important that it's very firm, stiff foam. Because um, if you use soft foam, then the wool will go into it. Like you don't use it for, a, you wouldn't use like foam that you have a as a household sponge to clean things that would be too soft. Yeah. I don't know what the foam is called that that you're using. Do you know, Adriana? Well, uh, I think this is more like a oh, how you say you false you string upholstery. Yeah, but um, yeah, but there's different kinds of folds that are. And someone at today's, we had an in-person um, version of this program this morning. 
and people were talking about um, earrings, making earrings oh, yeah. with felted pieces. Do you remember what? Oh, what else I, I was explaining like if you do have some. Um, yeah, it will be like like you do have. Sorry, I didn't send you these kind of things, but you can have also like these pieces. I don't know if you can see it. It's mm -hmm. A little big piece of wire with a loop, and then imagine that you would like to make you be like a hanger or something being him. So you will make it to go through through it and that's why we you also have like the glue gun the hot glue sorry that it will make sure that it will stick in there oh. and yes it can be like a for to make a keychain or earrings or like a mobile for a for a, yeah for a baby or, or a mobile for your house mm -hmm. <laughs> nice yeah yeah, I've done it. I've done the mobiles with um, fishing line, mm -hmm. and so then to keep it in a in one place, I don't have an example, but you so you go through a small bead, and you go through twice, and so that kind of holds it, and then you go through like your B, and then you can do another bead on top, but you don't have to, and then wherever you want to place your second object, you go through the bead again, and then mm -hmm. through the object. So let's say it's a flower, and then again. Um, so you, you can, but you don't have to put a, be a bead on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be as small as um, maybe not a seed bead, but then I don't know what the next size up is. It doesn't have to be as big as a pony bead, but just enough so that the um, that if somebody pulls on it, it doesn't go through the object like the bead. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very interesting. That's just what we had around the house. Does anyone on 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 today? Oh, Miss Melanie says we have those earring pieces in the teen space. Yes, that's a good idea to put some felting supplies in with them. Um, it is a very sharp needle, however. So, but just, but like if you made it at home and then you can come get some, yeah some the earrings. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if the teen if uh, Building sixty one has earring. They do have also supplies. Like they do? some earring supplies. Yeah. So you see now it has the little wings kind of there. Uh, <laughs> so ready to go. We do have a new pollinator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we can keep on the landscape or we can start with the, well, I haven't, haven't finished the landscape, but also like for this, you can do like any shapes, like if you want to do a pattern, you want to do like a little landscape as well, anything that it comes into your mind. And yeah, I think you have for uh, enough fabric for two. I'm not really sure if you have for one or for two bracelets, but you so you do have some in there. Okay. Do you have any special requests for a bracelet, Kathy? Any special requests? Yeah. Um, what would you like to see in a bracelet? Let me so see. I how, made it for you. How? Oh, how would you? How would you make like waves? Mm -hmm. Like a kind of like an ocean wave? Yeah. Do you want it with a with a small kayak? I dream of kayaking <laughs> again. <laughs> well, kayak, I'm not really sure if I'm going to be able to do the That's kayak. okay. We'll, we'll start with waves. <laughs> start with the waves. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If I get a picture of the kayak, yeah, I will be able to. Okay. <laughs> it's like a canoe, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It's a small boat. It is like, it's actually, should be like, actually very easy. It's not like a big ship, pirate yeah. ship. <laughs> and I have done pirate ships, actually. <laughs> You've done pirate ships. Yeah. What other what other things have you felted? Uh, I did felt my uh, lovely friend Janet biking on a mountain. Oh, <laughs> mountain biking. I love it. We miss yeah. Janet. Yeah. So she can probably share with you a picture of what we made. Okay. Like, like for the waves. 
we do have Karian. Welcome, Karian. Oh, yay, welcome. Um, would you like to introduce yourself and maybe tell us a memory of how do you connect with Mother Earth? What, what uh, childhood memory do you have with your relation with nature and Mother Earth? We have Carrie Ann. Is that do we have Kyle and Russell? Oh, Miss Melanie, so happy to see you. Did you see that Melanie's here? Say hi, Melanie. Hi. hi Melanie. We're, we're trying to set things up. I kind of had some Mass technical stuff. issues, so we're yeah. Oh, Everyone's now bad at me. Their mama messed up. But we're we're working on it. This will be recorded, so you can go back and and look. We're glad you made it. Yeah. We're glad we're here too. Hola Elizabeth, bienvenida. Hi Eli. Okay. So Adriana, do you want to repeat your question? Hola Eli. Uh, Karian, would you like to share a memory of how do you connect with um, nature? Oh my gosh, is that Kyle? <laughs> Hi Kyle. You see, you see my Hi, Hi guys. Oh man, I know they love nature because they live up in the mountains pretty much. Whoopsie left her crack oh. of ball pit and, and on the floor. <laughs> cat toys. I'm gonna close the I'm gonna I'm gonna close the blinds so we can get a little bit better. Should we are we too loud? <laughs> Okay. Oh, mom, a new piece of phone. Look. Yes, yes. Hola, Elizabeth. Awesome. Quieres presentarte y decirnos algún recuerdo de cuando eras pequeña, esto de tu infancia, de cómo conectabas con la naturaleza. Sí, claro. Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Elizabeth Pineda. Y uh, pues mi infancia estuvo ahí en México y pues hacía todas estas actividades, pero vine para acá y ya no, no, este, no las, no las hice, no las volví a hacer. Y ahorita que hay estos talleres y este um, recurso y que nos dan, nos dan la oportunidad de hacerlo, pues este, lo quiero hacer <ríe> Y pues la naturaleza me gusta mucho porque um, yes. no me gusta, me gustan las yes. montañas yes. y me gusta cuando neva, pero casi no me gusta cuando llueve. Muy bien, gracias Eli. Eli is sharing that she grew up in yes. Mexico and she was very connected okay. with nature and she's happy to be in this program and she's glad that these are, this is a resource, resource available for her. So she's very happy to be here and she's happy to connect with nature and connect with the program today here. Okay, so I'm gonna explain in your kids, uh, for those that just join us, we do have these needles that comes, um, it is kind of like the case, the case and the, and the handle at the same time. So it comes like this, this, um, this will be the case. So if you pull out the little tip and then you will turn your needle around, vas a sacar la, el palito y vas a voltear la aguja para entonces ponerlo nuevamente and then you get it back in. Me dice si necesitas que te lo explique, Lisa. Ya. Sacar la aguja, la volteas, que quede la parte dobladita en la parte más delgada. Like the little folded piece of the needle should stick in the thinner part of the wood. And then you stick it back in. So now you have your needle with the hand. Sí, okay. ya lo hice, gracias. Perfecto. Yep. Okay. 
And then uh, you can, you have like a little piece of felt and you have a long one with you will be able to make a bracelet, but like the one that we do have here. Tenemos una pieza que es más larga de, de fieltro con la que van a poder hacer un brazalete y trae el velcro. Entonces el velcro se le pondrá al final para que puedan armar el brazalete. Uh, el velcro se pega solito. The velcro kind of sticks um, itself stick, but it's always good to do like a couple of stitches because it is not enough the glue that it comes with the velcro. So feel free to, if, when you finish your bracelet, to make sure that you do um, extra stitches to make sure that it will stay there. The velcro. So Bye, Melanie. Thank you is, for being here with the chat. Oh, I have a quick question. Is there a way we can make Adriana's um, part bigger? So if you right click um, and you can either you can pin it on the if you click on the three dots. Um, you could also go into speaker view if that's not working for you. You could click on speaker view instead of gallery view um, because okay. it'll be mostly Adriana's hands. Okay. Um, so Adriana will be speaking most of the time, so then it would show her image. Sorry for not sharing that with all of you earlier. Okay. Did that work? Um, yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. And like right now, I'm trying to do like Kathy requests me to do some ways. So if you can see, it's kind of hard to see because my background is purple, but I'm covering with some uh, darker blue and some light blue here and trying to make the shapes of the waves like poorly and things like that. So you can play uh, a lot with this and I will show you like some samples that we do have here. Like if you see, you can, well, this has the moon and the sun at the same time and like the sky has like some uh, clouds around and you see like some little flowers and that's right. And Adriana, I noticed you don't cut the wool when you need to make something small. Can you show us what you do for the wool when you're getting ready to do the felting? Yes, like, well, this is more like a more abstract sample. Like, sorry, Kathy, I'm not really sure if I understood your question. So um, can you show the fluffing again? Oh, yeah. So, so you don't cut the wool. So, you know, if you've got a long piece, all you do is like gently pull and Adrian will show. Yes. Like imagine I have this little piece in here. And if one, I want to do, uh, yeah, start with any part, you have to do make it fluffy first in order to make all the, all the texture kind of mix up together. If it's, so it is not a straight but it's more like mix it and that will make it easier to hold in your piece. So lo que hacemos es esponjar la lana, porque si está esponjadita, este, no se corta, procuramos tomar la medida de lana que necesitemos. And then you can play, like if, if I'm gonna do like a green apple, I can fold it around and start poking to make a, 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 the shape of the apple. But if I'm gonna do in a flat uh, landscape, I do like the fluffy part and then I start playing like, where do I want to place it? And I start poking on top of it, okay? And remember, uh, you do have this, you poke over your, on top of your uh, block of foam and then you have to pull it off, peel it off uh, very regularly so it doesn't get uh, needle felted to your foam, right? And entonces lo vamos, pues, hacer la lana picada sobre tu, tu bloque de, de hule espuma y recuerda siempre levantar con cierta frecuencia la tela para que no se vaya a quedar cosida en el, en el bloque de hule espuma, ¿ok? Like, if you do, gonna do like any 3D, three-dimensional piece, like this, we, we just made this little B, like, if you see, it has the little eyes, it has the wings, it has the stinger back here, the stripes and everything. Uh, it's this kind of the same. You make it first the fluffy part, and then you wrap it around the shape that you will need 
to make, right? And then you start poking. Uh, make sure your fingers get out the way of the needle because it is uh, very sharp and it is very painful if you hurt yourself with the needle. So make sure you, you do not you do not poke your fingers and start poking and poking and poking. Okay. Does anyone from the ones that were here before want to share what you have done? I don't know, like um, Shino Ferguson or you know, people in the iPhone? Tori? Tori, yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. So you're welcome to share on screen if you like. If you would like to share what you yeah. have been working on, it will be very good. Or you can type if you'd rather, you can tell us. Yeah, so you can type like if I'm making a little bear or I'm making a mountain. Nikita, do you want to share? I think I just put my finger. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, it's okay. okay. Yeah. Well, you know, those are brand new, so you, you're sure that even if you poke your your finger, isn't uh, of course it's always good to go and wash your fingers, wash your hand with um, warm warm soapy water. But it's not like it's like any other uh, needle, you know, like can be very painful, but it goes away very fast. Also. Yeah. So from a health and safety point of view, it's probably good that you are the only one using your needle yes. or keep it in the family. Yes, no sharing. Even if it's like your own family, I always recommend like you want each one to get their own needles. And if you see, you do have some extras also because sometimes they break easily. So you will be able to replace your needles in case that breaks. And I will say, I've never seen, um, a case that turns into a handle like that. I'm really glad that you found something like that. It makes it much easier than using that teeny tiny, just that the metal part yeah. of the needle. Yes, it's, and you can actually find some really fancy ones. Like, like if you're gonna say like, okay, this will be my hobby, maybe you can invest a little bit more on, on this. But this is a very good one, like solid wood. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah, but if you don't have if you if you buy more and you and you don't have that case or that handle, you can still just use the bare needle as well. Yes, you can use the needle. It will be more like like working with just the needle like this, and because it has this little piece uh, folded, it's always good to use it from there. Kind of helps you to to work on it. Yeah, you can do do it. Like and there are there are different gauges of needles. Um, I'm at. I don't know which gauge this is. Um, yeah, we do have. Uh, well, the ones that you do have is the small. Would I think I sent you small, medium, and large? And I think I'm not really sure it was like one of each or two of each. But you okay. have some replacements there, and you have like the different sizes, so you can do. Um, the difference with the sizes is like. Uh, like also the texture that it will take to your needle folder. And then like I was talking before, like if you, like there's some extra tools that you can eventually have, like this one that has like many needle, many needles at the same time. So it will go like faster, of course, <laughs> like maybe for the backgrounds, <laughs> it okay. is helpful. It goes faster, but also, um, kind of helps you to, like if you're doing a dog and you wanted to make it fluffy, this helps you to do like very fluffy hair for, for animals and things like that. So, and then like those ones that are more like, a, how do you call these? Like more hairy foam? Kind of yeah, thing? it's it's firmer foam. Yes. I don't know. I don't, does anyone who's watching um, know what the different foams are called? Because I'm not that familiar. I'm not really sure, but those ones that you can actually, like if um, I did this piece of art that is actually on display at the Museo de las Americas. Uh, 
and it was it, it was a, a case of jars um, and I it was made of this so I used it and I oh. I, I need to felt on top of this so I felt like I don't want to to throw this away because it's very bad for the environment so I made it I uh, yeah I turned it into a piece of art yeah. so where is the museum in the museum Museo de las Americas it is in Denver in San, very close to Santa Fe Drive and is it is an exhibition that is uh, about uh, gender violence prevention so you just this will run until August 10 I think oh. or something like that so you still have time uh, to go and see it there and they do have the first Friday uh, free free entrance for the museum so estaba explicando que con este tipo de de material que es como un este como tipo unicel o algo similar que contamina mucho entonces una pieza que yo hice hice una pieza de arte que ahorita está en exhibición en el museo de las Américas en Denver cerca del Santa Fe Drive este Boulevard del Boulevard Santa Fe Drive y pueden ir a ese museo y es y esa pieza y la exhibición completa está este dedicada a la prevención de la violencia Wonderful. So we have about five more minutes. Friends, do you have any questions for Adriana? How to make a different shape? What else you can do with your felted piece? Or if you want to show what you've been working on, we'd love to see your work. Yes. And we were talking uh, before, like these little kind of dots. Well, this is supposed to be flowers, but those are uh, very easy to make. So you can have a little piece of your a very thin piece of your your wool uh, you can straight it up and then you put it around your needle like a you know like the french knot in the embroidery in the embroidery work <laughs> and then you just tuck in there And then you will have that little dot. Like if you want to make like a um, the I say the starry night of Van Gogh. <laughs> oh, starry night! Yeah. So you can actually do many, many, yeah, many stars. Yeah. And I think is it Venus that's out right now? Like just after sunset, it's been really bright. If you enjoy looking at the stars. Yeah. I don't know if anyone has any question or if you want to share in one word what you what you're taking away from taking away not take out okay no take, take away take yeah <laughs> sorry about that i get confused i think i think it's amazing that you can teach in two languages at once <laughs> sometimes i get like confused a veces me confundo un poco um, so Tori said, uh, loving watching Adriana's process, helpful to have Kathy's insights, also trying to make a flower like Lupita. Thank you for this wonderful program. Gracias y maravillosa. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, uh, Tori. Thank you. We're, we're, thank you very much. We're glad that you joined the program. Yes. And I will um, I will email everyone the link, but it will be on the Boulder Library's playlist. Um, and I sent the links earlier to look on the Summer of Discovery, and we'll put this. Um, well, up, up, depending on how my download goes, it'll probably be up tomorrow. Thank you. Does anyone want to share? Quieren compartir qué es lo que les dejó este programa? In una palabra, in una frase. So Karen asks, is it possible to needle felt something onto, say, a wool hat or something similar? Yes, totally, Karen. We were talking about how you can needle felt on a t-shirt, you can needle felt on, a, yeah, and mostly any piece of garment or any piece of cloth will be a good fit for needle felting. Um, Kathy has fixed some sweaters 
think she can share a little bit yeah. about that. Um, so if you are going to to uh, needle felt this onto something that you can't take off when you wash it, just think about how you want, you know, you might want to hand wash it after, um, or you can just like, you know, put it on with a pin or something that's removable. Um, if you put it onto a wool hat, absolutely. Um, and the more that you needle felt it into the hat, um, it'll be more stable. Um, it will, if you wash it on high heat and with soap, it will continue to felt. So that's just something to keep in mind. That might be something that you want. Like if you're making a cat toy, um, you could, if you you make it and then you put it in the washer and, and the dryer, then it'll help it um, be really firm. Um, if what Adriana's talking about for the sweater, I, I was trying to fix a hole and I didn't think about the fact that the more I was um, needle felting directly onto the sweater, the more it was bringing in the fabric of the sweater in. So it ended up being a little puckered, which was not my intention. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Alguna pregunta o algo que quieran compartir antes de que terminemos? Ya son la hora en la que vamos a concluir nuestra clase. Pues muchas gracias por todo esto porque uh, entré tarde, pero aún así estoy tratando de hacer algo y, y pues muchas gracias por esta clase y sí me gustaría participar más y más para saber más actividades y, y gracias por invitarme. Muchas gracias, Eli. She said that uh, thank you very much for the class, even if she get, can get <laughs> here a little bit late, she's trying to do something with this and she's happy to be here and she expects, she, she hopes to uh, join more classes. Great, yeah. wonderful, thank you. Gracias. So I will say thank you for joining us. Oh, Lupita. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? It is too, Lupita? <laughs> Muy bien. Oh, sí, me falta mucho, pero bueno. No, oh, está muy lindo. Sí, sí, gracias. Lupita, ¿qué es una flor con qué más? Con ella a un lado. Ah. Muy bonito. So I want to say thank you to all of you for joining us for Needle Felting to connect our story with Mother Earth. It is part of Summer of Discovery. If you haven't already, I invite you to sign up for our summer reading program, Summer of Discovery. I put the link in the chat. I'd like to thank the Boulder Library Foundation for its generous sponsorship of this and so many of our programs and events. And I want to thank especially Adriana. Thank you for putting this program together, for conducting it in English and Spanish. I put the link um, to, or I put your information if you want to follow Adriana on Instagram, you are most welcome. Um, so thank you. And thanks to Melanie Forsky Howard for being chat captain. And thanks to all of you. So thank you everyone. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Estamos con el programa. Y bueno, agradecemos a la Fundación de la Biblioteca Pública de Boulder por apoyar estos programas, por este, subvencionar estos programas. Y bueno, en el chat pueden encontrar las redes sociales de Luna Cultura y también pueden encontrar el sitio de internet de la Fundación de la Biblioteca, así como si quieren registrarse al verano de descubrimiento, todavía tienen tiempo. Está el enlace ahí para registrarse al, al programa de Brano de Descubrimiento, donde pueden dar seguimiento a sus minutos de lectura y algunas actividades y ganar premios y estará disponible hasta el 15 de agosto. Muchas gracias a todos por participar. Thank you everyone for seeing. Thank you.